I've got uh, a special guest with us here. Let me get you all queued up in here um, to make sure that I got your microphones on. <laughs> here we go. Hey, Gregory, trying to clip a call in Alameda, San Antonio, bread bar. <laughs> all right. I think I got you in good shape. Let's see. Number three is the one you talk on, the number two. Okay, we're in good shape here. That's, uh, we're not using headphones, but that's okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got a special guest for you, as I told you earlier in our program. Danny Barnes, uh, national recording artist from Seattle, Washington, is here with us today. And as many people, including myself, uh, consider him to be one of the best banjo players in the United States. I know I, you're looking awful humble when I said that, Holy <laughs> Danny. <cow. laughs> Set the bar kind of high there. <laughs> <laughs> live, right. uh, uh, <laughs> a reputation to live up to that's for sure um i want to make sure to let everybody know that uh, again that danny is playing tonight at um firefly lounge used to be called the green frog in uh bellingham washington and you're doing the early show tonight i understand seven to about nine or nine fifteen or so and then there's another group coming in at nine thirty. so i told uh, all the people listening in and it's a gadget county that if they're like me and can't stay up very late then you know they they can make that show but um it's late for me too i'm usually in bed by now actually <laughs> that's good i like that <laughs> Danny, I want to talk to you a little bit before we play some of your music, a little bit about your career. I um, I first was introduced to your uh, music when I was on another station in Arizona, and I was uh, asked to review um, two albums. I'd never heard of you, unfortunately, until then. I reviewed Pizza Box, where you had three songs with uh, Dave Edmonds' band. Or just Dave Edmonds, I guess. And, Dave Matthews Band. Or excuse me, Dave Matthews Band. Thank you, Danny. I never met yeah. Dave Edmonds, yeah, but that's yeah, a good Dave guitar Edmonds, picker. Yeah, he's yeah, a good the, guitar the picker. The rockabilly artist. Yeah, yeah he's you, a good guitar player. Tell where my head's at. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then Rocket was another one. And I played a song from that earlier in our show today. I played Poison. Oh, uh, thank you. There. And I had no clue um, how versatile your music was. Until I um, then went back and started looking at some of your earlier CDs and saw the traditional bluegrass uh, music that you played. And uh, I was completely amazed by it. And um, I had also heard of the band uh, that you were in called Bad Livers. Bad Livers, that's right. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself. You're a transplanted Texan, I understand. Yeah, I've been up here about 21 years, I guess. Yeah, I lived in Austin for about 35 years. I grew up in that area. Right there in the middle part of the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. For music, it was a great place to be because they there were so many concerts there in the 70s and 80s and stuff, and it was really a vibrant place to be. There were more bands and people coming through there, and you can imagine it was a it it was really a, kind of a musical mecca at that time. It was a great living there, and I, I graduated in the University of Texas in '86, and uh, that's it was a real treat to be in that area and get to see all that kind of all those those great bands and hear all that music and be inspired by those musicians i remember when i was working down there years ago about the same time you were talking about in the 80s and sixth street was uh, i think they had said at that time that there was over 200 live bands playing on any given night down there and it just seemed like you walk from door to door to door and a lot of live music was on yeah, it was really something, you know. Yeah, it, it, to me, like if you're gonna have a scene somewhere, you kind of it's like an algebraic equation. You kind of got to have there's four or five variables in it, and one of them is you got to have venues, you got to have an audience that'll support it. You have to have radio like you're doing here. Right. You got to have uh, journalists to cover it. You have to have reasonable real estate where people can afford to live there. And if any time any of those kind of variables get compromised or have a zero value or a negative value the scene really kind of suffers a little bit, it seems like. But there was a time when there was a really amazing, like I used to see Stevie Ray Vaughan on Tuesday nights at the Rome Inn for $3. Correct. He played every every Tuesday. And it was really a lot of great musicians. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, and it's just a great town too. Yeah, they had that Armadillo World headquarters when I was a kid, you know. It really messed me up on music because they would have uh, like Papa John Creech and the Ramones, you know, and like just every kind of band you can possibly imagine. And, and, and they wouldn't group it together where it'd be like, you know, 
uh, all country bands or all reggae bands or all jazz bands or blues bands. And when I say blues, I mean Latin and Hopkins and Freddie King and Albert King and B.B. King, like actual blues, you know. But they would mix up all the different types of music. So when you went on a given night to see Gatemouth Brown or something, you're liable to see, you know, a punk rock band or something. Like you could see all different kinds of music. I saw the first B-52s tour there, Devo's first tour, The Clash, you know, The Dead Boys, The Ramones. All those great bands and all the great bluegrass bands played there as well. Ralph Stanley, I saw Bill Monroe there a bunch, Jim and Jesse. Anyway, they just had, they would sort of, they didn't really look at music in terms of it being like a genre or whatever. They would just have good stuff and interesting stuff together. And it was a very interesting uh, aesthetic. There was a um, uh, place that's no longer there that I used to go to a lot when I was working there in the early 80s uh, called Snavely's. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I remember I saw my hero down there. I um, uh, finally got to see him shortly before he died, and that was B.W. Stevenson. Yes, sir. And uh, another fellow Texan that I, I really enjoyed a lot. And, yeah, there's a uh, lot of great music down there. Well, you were influenced, obviously, because um, it, it's really difficult, I mean, to say that. I mean, obviously, you're a great bluegrass player, but... You know, Rocket and Pizza Box are, I, you know, those are rock albums. So yeah. you're, you're all over the place with your genre. You're certainly not one to be allowed to be pigeonholed with your Well, music. I, you know, I kind of consider myself to be a songwriter first, a composer first. And then I use the banjo really as like a pencil or something. I'm, it's not really <laughs> like a, I'm not really driven by the instrument in terms of how it's associated culturally or whatever. I just play it as an instrument and then I use it to get my ideas out or whatever. And then when I went to school, it really kind of messed me up, too, because... I, my my training is in audio, and they had these great classes called about the, the history of recorded music, and you had to learn all about, you know, uh, Bing Crosby, how he invested all that money in Ampex at the beginning, and all the music that you know you had to really kind of get familiar with, like just about every kind of music that they made records of and stuff, and that was a real interesting series of courses that I got to take, and it got a lot out of it, you know. It's obviously influenced your music as well. Uh, you're all over the board, which is great because you do it all well. Um, would you like to do a song for us? Sure, I'll pick the banjo. Okay, that sounds good. I'll, I'll, Artist choice. I'll, I'll, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, in a stroke of marketing genius, I'm gonna play a, a song I don't have available. This is a, this is a brand new song I got called Coal Mine. And I, I got a brand new record I'm working on. Uh, my friend John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin is on this record. Uh, Bill Frizzell, the Grammy Award-winning composer Bill Frizzell is on there. My friend Dave Matthews is on there. And the great Matt Chamberlain from down in L.A., who actually used to live in Seattle for a long time, is on there. So my friends, there's a tune called Coal Mine. I'm going down, 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 working in a coal mine. Working all day, baby, till the sun goes down. Do the sound, sound, sound of the pick and shovel. I'm working all day, just digging that hole in the ground. I clocked in in the 70s. These days I'm working harder still. You know that I used to see things different. Till I pulled a double at the mill. Go down, 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 working in a coal mine. I'm working all day, baby, till the sun goes down. To the sound, sound, sound of the pick and shovel. I'm working all day just digging that hole in the ground. Tractor. I had to learn to ride and read. You must go scratching up the dirt boys to find all them things that you need. Going down, 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 I'm working in a coal mine. I'm working on a baby till the sun goes down. To the sound, 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 pick out a shovel. I'm working all day digging that hole in the ground. family someday i'm going back you'll find me sleeping in a graveyard lay down flat on my back going down 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 working in the coal mine 
We're working on a baby till the sun goes down. With the sound, sound, sound of the pick and a shovel. I'm working all day, digging that hole in the ground. I'm going down, down, I'm working in a coal mine. I'm working on a baby till the sun goes down. With the sound, sound, sound of the pick and a shovel. I'm working all day, digging that hole in the ground. Just working all day, digging that hole in the ground. That's Listen great. <laughs> That's my special guest today, Danny Barnes. <laughs> Thank Sorry you, Danny. Um, I want to point out, too, again, that Danny is going to be playing tonight live at um, Firefly Lounge in um, Bellingham on State Street at 7 o'clock. It should be a great show. It's a tremendous venue for you, those who don't recognize that name. It used to be called the Green Frog. Is it in the same building, Greg? It's at yeah, the exact same location. There's been very little change, except now they don't serve the cheese sandwiches anymore. So uh, no food at all up oh. there uh, since uh, the new ownership took over. But um, uh, Don't want to be making all that profit on them sandwiches. <laughs> don't, want to, don't want to be messing with that stuff. Every time I bring an artist in here, Danny, <laughs> they, they go... I can't wait to have one of those sandwiches. <laughs> so they were always... It's like on the ferry. They, they they quit having food there for a while. For about a year, they didn't have food on the ferries. Like, I guess the $8 Cokes, they weren't making enough dough on that. <laughs> to, to catch like, a yeah, finance yeah, at all. We can't, we can't afford this. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Oh, great. Well, tell us a little bit. When do you hope that new album to be coming out? We're supposed to finish sometime in the end of July. We should be finished. we got a little bit more recording. We've probably got maybe 95% of the track and done. i got a couple of bass parts to do, but... We're getting really close. We've done it, worked on it in Seattle at Studio X and worked on it in L.A. and in Brooklyn. For We were there, for, we were there two days uh, in Brooklyn. And uh, so we've been working pretty hard on it and trying to get it together and stuff, see what happens. That's great. <laughs> Have you got a, a, a tour then lined up to go along with I that? stay on the road, man. I do about 120 shows a year no matter what. I've wow. been doing that since 1986. Yeah. So I, I stay out here. I, I work pretty hard. I, already this year, I've been in you know D.C. I've been I've been all over the place. This year, I've been in New York like twice, maybe three times. Boston, Chicago, Minneapolis. Been all over the place. Maryland a couple times. Wow. D.C. <laughs> that's great. Tell me, how did you and Dave Matthews get acquainted? Oh, that's a good question. Um. I did. The, I was in. The, I used to play in this country singer's band. His name was Robert Earl Keane, oh, a country I western like, singer dude. He's buddy one of my favorites. Yeah, he's a good good friend, you know. And yeah. we we did, you know. I also don't know. another Texan too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's from Houston. Yeah, but he's a good pal of mine. I think we did maybe like twenty shows opening for them guys at those like kind of like outside sheds. I think they seat about twenty five, thirty thousand, whatever those outside places. And and uh, we had mutual. Him and I, Dave and I, had a couple of mutual friends and. Um, Anyway, we just started talking, and I sat in with those guys a few times, and they're, I don't know, became friends with them just from traveling with them and stuff. And I'm pretty good friends with a lot of those guys in the crew and whatnot. And those, this is a good, he's got a good outfit there, a bunch of good guys. They just got a new album out. I've been playing yeah, some yeah. songs off of that, too, as yeah. well. Yeah. And um, um, I also, I wanted to tell you, like I said, when I started going back through some of your music to uh, kind of prepare myself for this interview, I noticed that you were on several albums that I hadn't hadn't thought about in a long, long time. And one of them, it sounds like you've got a, a, a good friendship also with Warren Haynes. And yeah, he's a good good dude. Warren's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good fellow. He does that benefit concert. Uh, once yeah, that's a, year. a lot of fun out there. Yeah. Is that Nashville? Asheville, North Carolina. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's, that's right. What I yeah, thought. That's, yeah. That's, 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 they do a really good thing. for for. That's a really good deal. They do a lot of stuff for charity there and stuff. He has a really good scene there. I saw you were on the one that was released in 2009. And yeah, me and Chuck Lavelle, my buddy at Plays in the Stones, we we did our show there with that. and mm -hmm. That was a good You that also was had good. John Popper on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never met him before. He was real nice and stuff. I saw him uh, a few years ago. What a wild man. Yeah, he really he's is. a really good musician. He's oh. really good, you know. He's 
he's a good musician. Singer, uh, one of the, uh, if not the best harmonica player. That man, I he'll ever he'll heard. hurt you on that harmonica, he man. Sure. I never heard anybody play like that. <laughs> as far as I know, he still lives kind of halfway between you and I uh, uh, in Snohomish County. Oh, he lives know. up here. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know yeah. That he's got him. a yeah. He's he's had a couple of run-ins with firearms, so he. he oh had, yeah. He has to be laying low. low. Yeah, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah, right. he's laying low. Laying low. Yeah, and then I saw also that you did. Uh, uh, a song on what was it at Mississippi All Stars? Um, yeah, yeah. I played with the, play, did a cut for them and stuff, and North Mississippi All Stars. Yeah, those guys are nice too. Cody's real cool. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've, I've been real fortunate. I just I have a lot of friends that play you know, from traveling. You meet all these guys traveling. Sure. So, so I play by myself. I have a an act I've been doing for about twenty years by myself, and, and well, actually, I guess it's about eighteen years I've been doing it. Maybe yeah, I think about eighteen years, but. I, I get a lot of jobs playing with bigger bands because I'm just one person and I don't conflict, so I can come out there and do my set, and then I only take up two channels on the PA, <laughs> so I, I can walk right off. And then a lot of times I'll play with the, the band at their encore. You know, I play right. at the end because I'm just one guy. So I so I meet a lot of guys that way. You know, that's great. Yeah, you and you've been in the business a while though too. I, I've been full time since '86. That's great. Full time in 1986. That's great. But I started in 1971. I started trying to play the banjo in 1971. That's about all I've really done for 47 years or whatever, just try to figure out how to play the banjo. I still practice and take lessons and work on it like crazy. Do you really? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a lifelong study, of, you know, banjo. That's great. That's great. I noticed that on— You know who lives up by me is David Grisman. You know who David Grisman is? I know exactly. Yeah, I've seen him friend. several times. Yeah, he lives— I didn't 12, know he... Yeah, he moved up there. It's, been, it's just like having— I don't know, it's like having some guy from the Bible move to your neighborhood. It's just <laughs> real heavy, man. So it's really great having him around. He's a wonderful man. We played we were playing at the San Francisco Jazz Festival like next weekend. Oh, that's great. I think it's maybe it's weekend after next, I forget, but yeah, we we, we play pretty regularly. We got a, a thing we do, me and him and his son, Sam Grisman, is a great bassist. It's Samson stupid. is a great bass player. Yeah. And so him we have a trio and we we played at Del Fest with Del McCree band. Great. Uh, this year we played at uh, Wintergrass here, and so we're going to play different are, festivals. And are stuff. you going to be at the Vancouver uh, Festival uh, this? Is that a jazz festival? No, it's a folk festival. I think, no, right? I have played there, and I've played the Vancouver Jazz Festival with Bill Frisell, but I'm not at that date. I'm on a different part of the country at gotcha. that time. Yeah, I saw James McMurtry. He's going to be Oh, yeah, there. yeah. I worked a lot with James. He, he's a nice guy. I interviewed him uh, about five, six years ago, yeah. and um, a very talented guitar yeah, player, great, too. A lot great. of people don't under, don't realize that he's an amazing guitar Yeah, he's player. really good. Yeah. I used to work in this little music store. I taught in this music store, I taught banjo lessons, and he would come in. And we'd just sit in the corner and play for, I don't know, six or seven hours. He would just sort of get a guitar and sit off to the side and play, you know. Yeah. He really likes to play. He's a good, really funny guy. He's got a really dry wit and he's oh, really yeah. bright. Yeah. His um, his lyrics are outrageous, too. They really are. Yeah, he's think. a great writer. Yeah, I enjoy that. How I'm about... on a couple of his records. You know, play banjo on a couple of his things. <laughs> did you? Yeah, you know, like, How Are You Gonna Find Me Now? That's the last one I did was that track, How Are You Gonna Find Me Now? I know that one. Yeah. That's great. How about doing another song for us? Sure, man. I think the thing I would like to do is I want to play one off my most recent record. It's called Stove Up. It's a, basically a banjo record. I never had made one, so I made a banjo record. So I'll pick you one off of there. So I'll, I'll pick a little banjo tune. Because I, ha I have a banjo right here. You don't happen to have a banjo, do you? No, sir, I don't. And so if, if I, I need, did, I wouldn't know what to do If with I need it. to borrow one... Uh, <laughs> Okay, I only have about 20 of them. Okay.
Thank you, Danny. That's great. My my special guest this afternoon, Danny Barnes from Seattle. And let's mention again that he will be tonight at um, the Firefly. Firefly. <laughs> Firefly. Formerly Green Frog in downtown uh, Bellingham on State Street. An intimate little club. You, uh, I know you played there before. When uh, I think uh, I played there in another iteration of that club, where it was ankle deep in in uh, peanut shells. <laughs> Did you ever go to that one? No, I had not. That was before my. It time was like really straight, there. like you, you could, it was really long and small and narrow. But yeah, I had a pretty good scene there. It, it, it's it only holds ninety eight people. No, that's about the right size for me. <laughs> good. You'll have a, you'll have a good time <laughs> this evening. That's for sure. Um, what in the world brought you to Seattle? Well, at the, you know, I just travel so much in my work. I kind of figured out I could just have to live. Well, a lot of it's from working with, in bands with guys who live all over the country, and you kind of realize, well, shucks, I guess I could just live wherever I want to live, you know. So my wife and I moved to over there by Port Townsend. We've been over there. It's a beautiful area. You know, pretty, pretty good lick. And uh, it's nice over there. And it's a little tricky getting to the airport and everything. I got to get back and forth to the airport, which is not my favorite part of the day. But it's nice. It's nice getting home and and uh, walking on the beach and stuff like that. I really like the climate up here. The, uh, right. the climate suits my clothes, and I like the way. Typically, you meet folks that read books and stuff like that. And, <laughs> That's great. and I don't mean that in a coy no, way. I, know, I, mean, I, know. I mean, I mean, just like in an honest way, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the West the West Coast has got a vibe, you know. It's, i got to remember. I'm going to use that one. Thank you. That was pretty good. I like, <laughs> I like that. That's what one of my friends described Robert Keene. He's like, he's like a country singer, but he, like, reads. <laughs> so, he, was to, he was totally trying to be oh, – he wasn't being God. catty or anything. But That's hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> um, a good thing you got up here when you did because now uh, the price of homes is um, – uh, shot through the roof now yeah that's always a frightening perspective because the, the first thing that goes is art you know it's like it's tough man it's tough like for guys that are you know artists poets and guys like that they they get smashed pretty good when the real estate goes up because the clubs stop paying and and it's just, it it really is tricky you know that, that's a tricky thing like a lot of the scenes that happened would happen because they the real estate was cheap like greenwich right. village in new york right. the reason why there was so much music to come out of greenwich village it was cheap to live there right or warehouses yeah like san francisco that. same thing right. london same thing you know right. and, and then the, the then the music disappears and no one can figure out why and the reason is people can't afford to live there anymore and the know. dot-com people have come in and High tech has taken over. Yeah, and the prices go up. Yes, indeed. Once again, my special guest today, and I'm just thrilled you came to see us, uh, Danny Barnes from Seattle. Uh, He'll be tonight at uh, Firefly Lounge, 7 o'clock p.m. 7 o'clock. Yeah, he's doing the early show tonight. 7 uh, (laughs) o'clock. How'd you like to do another song for us, please? Sure. Um... I'm going to play an old Bad Libber song. This is the very first tune the Bad Libbers ever recorded on a record called Delusions of Banjo. Well, I left my daddy's farm too young to do no wrong. I built a little home. I was raised up in the cornfield, 
Lucius is my name. I work more than a dollar for my pay till I see the sun again. I got to trouble for now. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, that's, you got through that one. There. <laughs> that's great. Wasn't quite warmed up the first part there. <laughs> that's terrific. Woo! <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank, thank I, you, it's Greg. been an absolute honor to have you here. Hey, I've been listening to your show. Thanks for playing different kinds of music and stuff. You're doing a heck of a good job. Well, man. Thank, thank you for doing. We appreciate you know we appreciate what you guys do here, trying to get actual music to people and what you do for the community. This is good. You guys do a good thing here. Community radio is happening, man. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for what you're doing. Really appreciate that. Danny Barnes will be tonight at Firefly Lounge in downtown Bellingham on State Street. He's doing I thought it was early. Bellingham. Well, oh, well, I'm not from here. Like you, I'm transplanted, too, so it probably is. Bim and him. <laughs> Bim and him. Yeah. Uh, I, it took me the longest time to get Whatcom County down right, too. That's the county that uh, uh-huh. Bellingham's located in. Here it's a little easier. It's just Skagit. The GPS says Skagit. <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to pronounce that. It's you know uh, you want to you got to do Skagit. That's, That's when they, they immediately mug you if you say that. <laughs> That's right, or throw raspberries at you because you know this is the agriculture center of, of the West Coast. Oh, it's terrific. Um, hope you have a great show tonight yeah, and a good thanks, crowd. Man. I think you will. And um, come back and see us again sometime, yeah, would you? Much love to you. Thanks a lot. I thank you so much. I'm going to put on uh, Bill Kirchin here with. Uh, a song called Rocket in My Pocket on our way out the door. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next weekend. Thanks so much for joining me here today. <laughs>